Dear friends, 100 years ago, when Skarlovi and Renez first arrived on their railway, they were young and silly. Skarlovi was sulky and bouncy. He and Renez quarreled, but they learned sense. And the owner has just given them a lovely 100th birthday. Talion and Dolgoch at Toyon are 102. How about going to wish them many happy returns? The author. One sunny day at the narrow gauge shed, Scarloe was getting polished by Nancy. She wasn't happy with her going for another round of polishing. Not again, Nancy. This is the fourth time in a row. Aren't your arms getting tired? No, I can do this all day if I have to. Besides, you do need to look nice for a 100th birthday. What do you mean? I do look nice. You're just being a fusspot. And you're such a cross patch. Nancy continued polishing him. Scarlowy was still annoyed by being polished once again. Then he had an idea. He smiled and he was about to tell her a story. Nancy, has anyone ever told you about my first days on Sodor? No, not even Daddy. Well, would you like me to tell you? Absolutely. Well then, climb down and I'll tell you. So she climbed down and took a seat. She was really excited. Okay, Nancy, are you ready? Yes, this is going to be awesome. Indeed. Now, let me start from the very beginning. And so, the little engine did. One hundred years ago, I was built in Wales. But I wasn't alone. There was another engine who was like a twin brother to me. His name Tally Flynn, and we would talk forever. We always talked about how splendid we would look when we pulled coaches. What about trucks? Did you talk about that? Ho ho ho, no, not really. We had zero interest in pulling them. When it was time for me to leave for the other railway, we said our goodbyes and hoped that we could see each other again one day. I travelled by boat and I hated it. It was wobbly and freezing. I thought I was going to be seasick and fall out of the boat. After a couple of days of being on sea, I finally made it to the docks. Back then, Soro didn't have many engines. Everything was still new and in the making. I was gently put on a flatbed and an engine named Neil was going to help me to get to where I needed to go. He was weird looking, but he was kind and we became friends. So you're the new engine that's going to make this railway possible. I'm glad you're here. What I've heard is that you're going to help with the trucks. Trucks? That can't be right. I only care about express coaches. Well, I guess that's about to change. Our controller's orders. Though so heed my advice. He must put some order into those trucks. Behave as they make, they hardly believe. I really didn't like the sound of that, but I was too tired to even say anything. It didn't take too long to get to the sightings. A lot of people were there to check me out. People weren't used to seeing engines at the time. It was dark when I was finally put on the tracks. I was left there alone and cold. I was not happy at all. When I woke up the next morning, there were trucks everywhere. I didn't know what was going on. Just then, a load of loaded trucks stopped right next to me without a train. Um, hello? There better not be a ghost here, one of the workmen laughed. Don't worry. The trucks came here from a slope. The load in them holds them down so they can come here. It's by gravity. However, empty trucks need to go there. That's why you're here. Why? Can't gravy or gravity, whatever it's called, do the job? Gravity? It only pulls them down. It needs to go up. Only horses or engines like you need to pull it up. Wait, you expect me to pull trucks? Of course we do. Then I won't. I prefer coaches, thank you. The workman left and walked away. The manager at the time, Mr. Mack, came to visit me. He wanted to give me and my crew some tests since I was still new and barely built. The first thing we will do is to steam you. Are you okay with that? 
Sure, but can I pull coaches after, please? No, not yet. I was so cross. I gave him such a look. He didn't understand what I was doing, so it was easy for me to do it. My fire wouldn't burn and I had no steam. All I could do is blow smoke at him. All I could do is blow smoke at them. They weren't happy about that. They called me names, but I didn't care one bit. So I stayed at the same exact spot for the rest of the day. They tried again the next day, but nothing happened. They kept trying again for the next few days, and still nothing happened. I still gave them the angry look. They finally gave up. Mr. Mac had had enough of my madness. Well, if you don't start and won't stop doing that thing, we'll cover you up until you learn to stop being a crop patch. And that's exactly what they did right away. They covered me up. I was not happy at all. Nancy turned around and was surprised to see some visitors standing behind her, listening to Scarlowe's true story. How long have you been there? They've been there since I started. Now, where was I? Oh, yes, me being covered up. And Scarlowe continued his story. I was sad and lonely under the covers. It felt like I was locked up in a tunnel or abandoned in the back of a shed being used as a generator. But thankfully, it only lasted a couple of days. The workman and Mr. Mac moved the covers and talked to me. I hope you're sorry, Scarlowe. If we let you move again, are you going to behave and do what you are told? Oh, yes, sir. Please, sir. I'll behave this time, sir. I promise. Good. Mr. Bobby here will help you work on this railway for a while. I was glad Mr. Bobby was going to help me. He was one of the men who built me, and I liked him. I pushed and pulled some trucks every day till my wheels ate. One morning, the inspector was to arrive, and Mr. Bobby said, Come on, Star Louis. Let's show the inspector on how hard you work on the island. We worked hard all day. The inspector was impressed. I really like how this engine works. I think he should stay on the rail. I was very pleased to hear that. I continued to work very hard. By the time the railway was complete, Grineas was the new engine. He wasn't like me at all. He was never excited or jumpy. He would work with the trucks without any complaints. And yet he was younger than me. One day, I came up to him with excitement and said, Oh boy, Reneas, I'm so excited for tomorrow, and I need to look my best because do you know why? Why? Because I'll finally be pulling the express train tomorrow, and the expector will be there too. I've been waiting for this day to come. Hmm. Then you better be careful and mind your books and bouncing. Then the coaches and passengers won't like that at all. I've never seen you poor coaches before, so how would you know? And I puffed away. There were four coaches on the railway. They were all females, but they didn't bother me at all. Their names were Agnes, Ruth, Jemima and Beatrice. When I got to the sheds, they were sleeping, so I blew a big whistle and said, Good morning, sleepyheads. Oh, who is it? Don't worry, he's one of the new engines. He's going to take us out. Hmm, well, I don't like the looks of this one, so we must be aware of the strange engines and must be on our guard. <laughs> oh, Agnes, our guard has barely arrived. There's no worry about that at all. I coupled up to all four coaches and happily puffed towards the station. Agnes was still suspicious and kept muttering to the other coaches. Be on your guard! Be on your guard! I was too excited to listen, but I wish I did. When I was at the station, Neil was there with the inspector. I was thrilled to see him and prove that I'm a useful engine. I backed up to Agnes and I didn't care if she was going to give me a dirty look. 
I was just having so much fun. Oh, this is so much fun. I'm glad I'm pulling the train with the inspector today. You may be looking after us today, but we're keeping an eye on you, Scarlowy. Now I listened to what she said, and I took it seriously. But Agnes didn't complain about our journey. I made sure we were having a smooth ride. We would stop at every station, and the manager and inspector would get out and admire the arrangements. Everything went well on the way. I completely forgot about what Agnes said, and continued being happy and excited. The manager was smiling for how well the ride was going. He asked my crew if he could join them and see how I worked. They said yes. Oh, wow, Mr. Bobby. This looks really easy. Can I try controlling him, please? Absolutely! Just let us teach you what these controls do. We were running very nicely. I was singing to myself and little did I realize that I was about to go round. The manager closed my regulator so I could stop, but he did it too quickly and too much. Agnes's buff was bumped into mine. That made a cross. He's playing tricks on us. Come on, girls. Let's bump him back and see how he likes it. They surged against me over and over again. I tried to tell them what happened, but they weren't listening. I was rocking back and forth so much, the manager lost his footing and fell onto the ground. I tried to stop, but it was difficult trying to stop four heavy coaches, so I shouted at my guard. Brakes guard, please! So he did, and finally everything stopped. Everyone was very cross at what just happened. They said it was my fault, especially the inspector. I will not let this engine play pulling me around the island again. It was a very bumpy ride. I was upset. My crew knew it wasn't my fault that the coaches were being mean to me. But I guess it is what it is. The next day came and it was Renee's turn. I had to stay inside the sheds. I knew that I should have listened to him and Agnes. But I was way too excited to ever listen to them and I regret it. Just then, Mr. Mack came to check on me and see how I was doing. I'm sorry for what happened yesterday. It wasn't your fault, Scarlowy. I shouldn't have been cross with you in the first place. The inspector is going to be here later this evening to check on you. He just wants to see how you're doing. I was surprised to hear that. I thought the inspector would have had Mr. Mack banish or me or scrap me. Meanwhile, the inspector was proud with Reneus. For new engine, you did your very best, and for and your arguments are very good. Reneus was pleased to hear that. A little later after that, the inspector came to see me. He told the manager what he thinks happened. Then he said something about what he thinks of me. Sure thing, inspector, and have a nice day. I was very happy that I was getting a second chance, and I now knew that I needed to be more careful and more useful. And who knew what was going to happen next after that? A few days after the incident with the inspector, I got a new paint job and my controls were now clean and easy to use. Even Mr. Mack was impressed. It's a good thing you have a cab, Scarlowy. Otherwise a rainstorm would screw up your fire and controls. I couldn't help but chuckle and agree with him. Before Scarlowy could continue, Reneus puffed into the sheds after pulling a long haul of freight cars. Hey, Scarlowy, why are all these visitors here? Are they taking photos of you? Oh, <laughs> no, Reneus. I'm telling them the stories of us when we first came to the island. Oh, cool. Is it okay if I tell the next part? Sure, I was at the part where I got a new paint job and clean controls after the inspector incident. Okay, let me tell you all what happened next. And so, Reneus did. Everyone was pleased to see Scarlowy. They were acting like they had never seen him before. To make matters worse, even the coaches were impressed to see him. Oh, what a handsome engine! Nils Nils in that cab are so distinguished. He sure got too big for his wheels. <laughs> Let's hope she doesn't bump us brutally like last time. Galloway couldn't help but chuckle when he heard all that. It was like as if he became a handsome celebrity who gets the ladies' attention 
Me, on the other hand, I'm too tired and annoyed to even pay attention to his nonsense. He couldn't help but boast about it to me. If you go to the works, you will be like me. Then you will get all the attention from everyone like I do. If you don't, you're just going to continue being slow like a snail, like you already are. Slow? Do you think I'm slow? Well, let me tell you something. Who's the one that has been late three times in a row last week? Ah, here we go again. Why do I even bother talking to you? Whenever I try to have a conversation, you always be impossible to talk to. You're just being a complete stick in the mud. After that, we just continue calling each other's names, like Mr. Negative and Red Hothead, and refuse to talk properly. Mr. Mac was so annoyed by this time that he has decided to have a sleep at the shed back to back. This lasted for days. It wasn't until a rainstorm came to the railway. It wouldn't stop for three days. On one of those days, Skylar, had to take some work to the quarry. He popped all with his mice on the wet country rail, the halfway to the quarry, on the muddy landslide. Skylar, noticed it and tried to stop, but the slippery rails made him continue running on the rail. Then it happened. Skylar, was stuck in the mud. He couldn't move an inch. Meanwhile, I was in the shed, keeping myself dry. It was peaceful from not dealing with Scarlowie, but the peacefulness didn't last very long when Mr. Maca came to see his me. I just got the news from Mr. Bobby. Scarlowie is stuck in a mudslide and you're the only engine who can help get him out of there. <sighs> After him being a complete hothead and calling me names, I'd rather not. He can stand there and get what he deserves. Even Mr. Bobby and the workmen who need to be at the quarry, do they deserve to be there? Ah oh, well, I guess they needed to be rescued. They don't deserve to be stuck there, so let's go help them. <laughs> By the time I got to where Star the Skylowie was stuck, the rain finally stopped, so it was easier for the workmen I brought to help us dig away the mud. It took a couple of hours to get the entire landslide away from the tracks in Skarlowy. At last everything was clear. I took the workmen who needed to be at the quarry there first. Then I took Skarlowy to the works, so he can have the mud off him. When we got to the works, he finally apologized. I'm sorry, Aeneas, for being such a hot end and calling you slow and other names. Apology accepted. I'm glad you finally admit that you were being such a hothead. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> and you're not a stick in the mud. That would be me. I mean, just look at me. <laughs> That's no joke, sir. We started to laugh really hard. It wouldn't stop. Even when the workmen came to fix Gallery, we still laughed. Ever since that day, we became good friends. We were like brothers. We never argued again after that day. It worked really hard on the railway. Thank you, Scarlowie and Reneas, for telling us your history. This will be perfect for the newspaper. The visitors got onto the train and they went. You know something? I almost forgot about what we were like a hundred years ago. Not me. I may be younger than you, but I was way more mature than you. They both laughed and went to sleep, expecting to work another day. A couple days before Scarlowe and Reneas' 100th anniversary, Duck was telling Peter Sam about the Dukes all being scrapped. But Peter Sam didn't believe that. There is no way other than a scrap. Have you even seen one before? Oh, actually, Peter Sam, oh, hi, but there was a long, long time ago when they were all fun and statedly, and yet they're all scrapped. When was the last time you saw a Duke? Well, the last time I saw one was a long time ago. Oh, dear, you're right. This is dreadful. Sir Topham had said that the Duke was coming to celebrate Scarlowy and Renee's birthday, and now the whole thing will be spoiled. Peter Sam puffed straight to the sheds to tell the others what Duck had said. Hmm, 
I don't know, Peter Sam. I think this is another one of his tricks. Remember the time he pranked Henry on getting him new tenders? This isn't like that. He was quite serious. That sounded like as if he was acting. That's how some pranks work. But Peter Sam disagreed, and the two engines continued arguing. It wasn't until Sir Topham Hatt arrived to stop everything, the two engines finally stopped and things went silent. They told him what Duck had said to Peter Sam. I don't have time to worry about him right now, because you're all going to be very busy tomorrow. Scarlet, you will be picking up the tube at 11 o'clock in the morning instead of 10.30. Everyone else, please don't cause any trouble. I just want you all to do your jobs and be really useful engines while the Duke is around. If the Duke is still alive... Don't you get started, Duncan! Sir Topham Hatt walked away to get things organized for tomorrow, leaving half the engines worried if Duck was right. The next day came, and everyone was ready. Reneus and Peter Sam were in charge of pulling the express. One of the coaches was carrying a television set so people far away from Sodor or weren't able to come see what everything was like. When they reached one of the stations, Scarloe was there waiting for them. But Scarloe wasn't upset. He was really happy. Hey guys, I brought the joke. I told you that nothing bad had happened to him, and it was just a silly prank from Duck. And he was right. The Duke stepped down from Scarloe and stood in front of him. The cameras were pointing at him, and he started his speech. Ladies and gentlemen and engines, I declare your new branch line by the lake open. Peter Sam was surprised, and he knew he had to ask him. Excuse me, sir. Are you real? I was told that the Duke was scrapped years ago. <laughs> Scarlowie told me about what you heard from Duck. And yes, I am real. Duck thinks that Dukes are useful engines, but they're actually people. Oh. 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 I am so going to give that duck a piece of my mind the next time I see him. Quiet, Peter Sam. He's about to give another announcement. I congratulate you, Sir Topham Hatt, for running a splendid railway on this island. I can tell you've been keeping yourself busy with being the controller and making sure that two of the engines keep running after they were built a hundred years ago. That must be a really long but useful life for them. Thank you, Scarloe and Reneus, for helping the railway for the century. Everyone cheered, and Peter Sam gave a whistle to his two friends. Now, do you two want to say something? Oh, uh, sir, I would love to say something. Okay, Reneus, what is it you want to say? Well, first of all, thank you everyone for giving me and Scarloe a wonderful 100th birthday. But I think I should give someone else a wonderful 100th birthday as well. Oh, like who? Well, we actually have twin brothers in Wales, where we are built. Their names are Tally Lynn and Dogosh. They were both made at the same time as us, and they're still working over there to this day. If you go over there to see him, please wish them a happy birthday as well and tell them that Gallery and I still think of them. Thank you, Reneus. I remember Scarloe saying something like that to the news reporter on television. I wish you a good luck on continuing running the railway and never give up. Everyone cheered, and the two engines think that they have the best birthday they could have had.